I wanted to take a little bit of a break from the YouTube drama and commentary, and it is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I wanted to talk about some personal things that I've been going through. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. If you're new to my channel, typically what I do is I try to take topics from the YouTube community or pop culture, and I do a little commentary on it to see what kind of lessons we can learn. But something I'm very passionate about is mental health. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yeah, so this is gonna be a little bit of a story time, some stuff that's been going on behind the scenes with my mental health. And the goal, the goal of this video is to see, you know, if, if you're watching this, maybe you'll feel less alone. Maybe some of the solutions that I have found might be able to help you. But I was having like a really rough week and just some aha moments came up and hopefully it can help somebody who's watching this video. So yeah, this, this last week has been really, really weird. Um, even, yeah, I'd say probably a little bit over a week. I've noticed, I've noticed this kind of, this, uh, this feeling of apathy, right? Just no feeling at all, this kind of numbness. And for me, sometimes when depression hits, it is that numbness where I don't feel anything. I don't, it's not like, oh, I don't get excited or I don't get motivated or I don't, you know, whatever it is. It's not just that, but it's also like, there, there wasn't like any sadness or any like terrible feelings or anything like that. It was just kind of numb. So last weekend, I think a week ago today, I actually got to go see one of my favorite bands for like the umpteenth time, uh, Taking Back Sunday. And I remember just being at that show and not like, feeling you know what i mean like just like you know i'm at a i'm at a concert i, I don't go to concerts as much anymore because i'm you know i'm getting a little old right and and yeah just like the feeling wasn't there i'm like what the hell is wrong with me and the reason this kind of freaked me out is because i am a very like passionate person right like when i create videos like it's because I see something my wheels start going I'm like this is something that should be talked about and I want to talk about it like this channel is a place for me to like toss out ideas suggestions and all sorts of things and like I was just kind of going through the motions I wasn't getting like super excited to make anything but nothing was really exciting me all that much and just being fully transparent in this video I saw it with my relationships in my life as well. Like, I just wasn't feeling anything, right? Like, you know, I have a son, I have a beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, I have, you know, friends and everything like that in my life. And I didn't, I wasn't feeling like these connections and I'm like, what is happening? So I, I've i been on um, an antidepressant slash, uh, slash anti-anxiety medication called Lexapro. It's a non-narcotic. I've been on that for the most part since I got sober about seven years ago. And I've been off it a couple times. I've been back on it for probably uh, rough estimate, like six months to a year now. I do know one of the side effects of that medication can be that kind of like feeling of numbness or no feeling or emotion at all. And so what, what I did was um, I talked with my doctor, which you should always do, always do if you plan on doing anything wonky with your medications. But I was like, yo, this is what I'm worried about. Um, I've done this in the past, like her, she knows me, like I, I'll cut it in half, right? So it's like, I think a 10 milligram and I'll just split it in half to like a five. And I was like, okay, maybe this will help me get some more feeling. Now, I primarily take it um, for anxiety rather than depression. I was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder and it was messed up because I take my meds in the morning and like halfway through the day, I started feeling really anxious. So like I would take the other half of it. And then I just got stumped. I'm like, okay, so I I I I drop I decrease the medication because I'm not feeling anything, and then the feeling I get is like this extreme anxiety. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Right? So I I set up an appointment with my therapist. I'm like, I need to figure out what the hell is happening to me, you know? Because I'm starting to think, I'm like, do I need a different medication? Do I need to change this? Like what's happening in my life, you know, I'm like checking out all these like um, books that I have on, you know, mental health and everything. And I'm going through like my little toolbox and toolkit and just trying to figure out what this is. And by the way, for those of you who aren't aware, like when I say toolbox, 
toolkit, as metaphorical, like just all the different coping strategies that we use for our mental health. And so I set up an appointment with my therapist and I start, I start talking to her and I explain everything that I just explained to you, just about this, uh, this, this feeling of apathy, no, no feeling, no numbness, like just nothing, like it's numbness, and telling her about how I've been messing with my medications. And like, we started talking, by the way, like this whole thing is why you need a damn therapist, all right? Like it is so important to get this outside point of view. And, and I talk to like um, my support group and things like that, but like this, like talking with her really, it helped click. And by the way, I use BetterHelp Online Therapy. Um, I'm an affiliate of them too. But yeah, like, I have, a, I have the most amazing therapist in BetterHelp. Let me get back to the story. So I'm talking to her and she asked me, she's like, Chris, how, how long have you been sober again? And I'm like, well, next month in June, it's gonna be seven years. And she's just talking to me just about like, you know, the, the research and the studies and her own experience. And she's like, well, you know, in my experience, a lot of people around seven years, like their, their brain starts to change and seven years can be a, a rough time for sobriety. And like, I got this flashback because I remember when I first got sober, I remember seeing a lot of people struggling around seven years. And I was like, this is really, really weird. And when she brought that up, I kind of remembered that. I'm like, what is there? Some kind of like internal addict, like recovery timer, just like ready to go off at seven years. But like, for a lot of us, we are using these like mind altering substances and your brain doesn't just instantly heal, right? So I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it and we start talking and she recommends, next time I talk to my doctor, ask about um, mood stabilizers, you know? And I'm like, oh God, because even though I'm very pro medication, um, I'm pro non-narcotic medications, if possible. Like if you are on a, a medication like, uh, you know, Xanax or something like that, you do you, just be careful. Just, I'm a, I'm a recovering pill addict, you know what I mean? So we started talking about this and I'm like, man, I just, I really don't like taking medications. Like that's one of the reasons I've tried to get off Lexapro a few times. I don't, like aside from like the side effects, right? Like I just don't like being rely, uh, reliant upon a medication. So we're talking through that and she knows like that I'm a workaholic and everything like that. And she's like, How, how's like your work, man? Are you still like working a ton? And like, I don't know how many of you follow me on Twitter, by the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, go follow me at The Rewired Soul. But the other day, like I had, I, I was feeling this numbness during the day and I felt this need to create because I've been pumping out like three videos a day. I, I felt this need to create, but I didn't want to create. And I, I sent out a tweet because I just told myself, I'm like, you don't want to make a video, Chris. Like, don't make a video. And for some reason, it felt like a million pounds let off my shoulders. I'm like, whoa. Like, it was very freeing. And then I was like in a good mood for the rest of the night. But I, I told her about that. But during my days, it's been these like ups and downs, right? Where I'm like feeling and I'm normal, like the current state I'm in, I'm feeling like just all right. You know, not, not amazing, not terrible, but definitely not numb. I'm telling her about these ups and downs. That's one of the reasons she mentioned the mood stabilizer. But then she's like, well, Chris, like how much time do you just like relax? And I'm like, well, I do relax. Like Tristan and I will sit down and we'll watch, you know, some Netflix or whatever. She just got me into the show Six Feet Under. I don't know how many of you watched that. We're on episode like four or five of season one, but great show. But like we sit down and we chill, you know, but most of my day, if I'm being honest, like, cause she goes to school for full time, I'm working, right? I'm creating content. I'm, you know, replying to emails and corresponding with people. Since my mental health break that I took a month or two ago, I've been getting back into just trying to find more leisure time, but it's not really fully leisure time because Basically what I'll do is I'll zone out playing some video games. I've been playing like Fortnite or Overwatch and I turn in, I turn on an audio book and I was explaining to her like just the way my mind kind of works. I don't want to waste any time. I want to take every single moment and make it valuable. So even if I'm playing video games, I just want to like be consuming something to educate myself and gain knowledge, which I can turn into wisdom and all these other things. And she's like, Chris, like, do you think it's possible that you you're getting uncomfortable when you're comfortable and it's not chaotic and it's not go 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 she's like chris because you're like a really go 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 person i'm like oh my god i'm like that that might be it like that like i have a hard time just chilling and after my therapy appointment like i i talked with uh, my girlfriend about it, and she's like yeah chris like 
she's like, I've noticed, she's like, it doesn't seem like you're numb. She's like, it seems like you're like restless. Like you're just trying to find things to do. And I'm like, oh my God. Like I remember when I first got sober, um, my anxiety started to go away because when you get sober and you start to clean up the chaos of your life, like things start to chill out. And I was really uncomfortable with being comfortable. My brain was used to the chaos. So one of the other topics that came up with my therapist was like, um, those of you who are new here, some stuff went down a couple months ago, but, but yeah, like a couple months ago, all that stuff went down and it was complete chaos. It was complete chaos. Just, it was one of the roughest things I've ever been through. Right. And, uh, and now it's kind of chilling out. Like there's still stuff that's out there and you know, um, I think people are still making videos about me and everything like that. But for the most part, like things are chilling out. Like it's, I, I keep that out. I have a very strong support group. I have friends. I'm getting back into the groove of making content and everything. And one thing that's just, just kind of like realization to me is I got caught up in that chaos and then jumping back into work and my brain hasn't like found that balance yet. And man, after just these kind of epiphanies, like these aha moments over and over and over again, this was a few days ago when I, I talked with my therapist and everything, and I've been feeling great. I've just been feeling amazing. Like my son and I, we just got back to, from seeing De uh, Detective Pikachu. Um, like I said, uh, my girlfriend and I, we started watching Six Feet Under. I've been doing stuff and like, I. I'm feeling again and it's almost like giving myself permission to just chill and relax and take a break has just worked wonders for my mental health. Like ever since just having these conversations, like this is why talk therapy is beneficial, like working through things and having a conversation, but sometimes it's difficult to solve a problem with the same mind that's creating the problem. You see what I mean? So just talking it out has been so beneficial. There is one thing too that I have changed. I've noticed that my social connections have not been as strong as they have as they usually are. Um, for example, like I said, when I play video games, I typically just turn on an audiobook and listen and because I want to like be educating myself and learning and getting knowledge and I got like some books like new books on like philosophy and um uh this one uh this one new book on like uh the state of the nation with therapy and mental illness and I'm just like I'm always just trying to consume this stuff I've been just cranking out books I've been going through like six or seven books a month the past few months right and what I'm getting at is like I haven't been playing video games with my friends like I've grown up a gamer with friends who are gamers too, and they've been sending me invites and stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm busy. I can't, I can't play like with you. I'm, I'm just doing stuff, and I'm like, I'm zoning out, just doing Fortnite challenges or zoning out in, in, uh, in Overwatch. Like I even turn, I even put my my Blizzard account to invisible so people couldn't see that I was online because I would rather just sit listening to audiobooks than interacting with my friends. So. This is part of like that, that toolbox that I mentioned where I was like, wait, my social connections haven't been there. So the last few days I've been really taking a break from reading as much or listening to audiobooks as much and and like reaching out to my friends and say, yo, I'm back, like let's play, let's game. And I think that is part of it too. And I've been really trying to be more present with my son, with my girlfriend Tristan, like in conversations and really getting those, you know, those connections, because I'm telling you right now, like all the medications in the world are not going to solve your depression or that numbness that I was feeling if you don't build social connections. Like, I'm just telling you, like, we're not built as human beings for that. Like we need to have social connections. But yeah, anyways, like I'm feeling great and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so I would be remiss if I didn't share with you what's actually going on in my life during this time. And like I said, if you stuck around this long, I really hope if you could relate to this story, like just know there is hope. These things are gonna go up and down. Like something that my therapist reminded me of too and something I preach to all of you is mindfulness and quit judging your experience. Like if I'm not feeling anything, if I if that passion isn't in me to just, uh, right? Like to go make a video or to do something, right? Like that's cool. Just let it be and just 
relax and chill, right? <laughs> Last thing I promise. It's actually really funny because as soon as I had these epiphanies, I got like really passionate and just back into creating. Like once I gave myself permission to chill, then I'm like, yay! And I got all creative and just wanted to get all these ideas out of make content and everything, right? But anyways, talk to your support group. Don't isolate build your social connections, and please, for the love of God, if you have the resources, get yourself a damn therapist, all right? Like I said, I use BetterHelp Online Therapy. It is great for me, but listen, I really do not give a damn where you get help, where you get therapy from, just get help, all right? So if you can, talk to your doctor, see if they can recommend a therapist, talk to friends and family members, see if they can recommend a therapist. If you have insurance, call your insurance company, see what therapists are in their network. Therapist, typically specialize in certain forms of mental illness as well. So if you're struggling from anxiety, depression, um, uh, PTSD, borderline personality disorder, you can find a therapist who can help you out with that, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. I'm always making videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support what I'm doing here, you get access to some perks and benefits like these beautiful credits right here, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.